Hi friends, welcome to this week's How To Tuesday. We are entering week three of Neurographic Art. I don't know about you, but I've had so much fun with this. My brain is constantly swirling and twirling with ideas. And it's kind of like, anytime I sit down to create and draw something, my brain starts to go to the Neurographic Art, slash Zentangle, slash Combination, and I'm having so much fun. And I'm having so much fun coming up with ideas for you guys too. This one's a little different. Um, which I'm trying to make each lesson different, still based in neurographic art. Um, and it tends, like I said, it tends to lend itself to Zentangle a little bit, uh, depending on how you do it. I think is with neurographic art, it is less constrictive as Zentangle. Zentangle is very Zen-like, but it does a lot of pattern work where, uh, neurographic art, it's also very Zen-like, but it does a lot of freestyle smoothing edges, rounding corners, that kind of stuff. Um, and there's really not a lot of constriction to it, if that makes sense. I hope so. So I'm really digging it. I'm really digging it. But I like, because I have such a big, diverse, like, deep background in Zentangle, and I've done it, and I've loved it for so long, I've taught it, all that kind of stuff, that um, this just, ring, you know, rings all the bells and ticks all the boxes for me. So I'm having a blast, and I hope you guys are too. Um, First of all, before I get started, I want to say thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is so much fun for me, and I love that you, maybe you found me for the first time or we've been together for a while, so I'm super grateful. Very, very grateful. Thank you so much. If you are somebody who's either on the fence about checking out my Patreon channel or new to it, I just want you to know that it is um, every How to Tuesday video goes up on that. You get real-time, ad-free, fully instructed lessons, and... Depending on what tier you sign up, you also get bonus lessons as well. So um, it's pretty darn cool, and I would love to see you there. Okay, let's go over supplies. I have a bag full of goodies here. Um, I have, we're going to work with Copic markers and black markers. I have my Copic skin tones. Just, I mean, that right there makes me so happy. That right there could totally be like a neurographic art kind of thing if you used it. And actually, I'm going to be using some of these, this type of look in one of, in this piece this week. And then I have a bunch of colors, a bunch of colors right there, all kinds of colors. Let me just pull them out. Uh -huh. I, have, I have more too, but I just, you know, grabbed what I had so that I could fit it on my table <laughs> as I worked. Um, I don't know how much of this I'm going to use. It's going to be mostly, there's going to be some. Some for sure, some skin tones, and some, maybe some color, maybe, maybe. But I grabbed it just in case, because as I've said before, I really like to have all my, you know, possibilities in front of me and next to me, around me, just in case um, I decide to use them. And I've also done a couple, I couldn't, well, I, I always, I've had this for oh, several years, this cheat sheet on my, for me to go back to. And then I've created, I did another one today because sometimes I create, you know, I like to try it again every once in a while and create new, um, what's the word I'm looking for? New combinations. I'm trying to try to create new combinations. Um, and I do. So I play every once in a while. I suggest you guys do that same. I will include this image for you guys just to have it. You can use this not just for Copic, but these can also be if you just have alcohol-based markers. Um, the numbers won't be the same, but the color section selections might be. But um, these are the combinations I've come up with and I've used and I like, and so there you go. I also have my black Copic. And then I grabbed um, my Uni Posca paint pen for details. My Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen letter F, letter F. I have my thick and thin Sharpies. I have my extra thick, which is chisel tip, fine point, extra fine point Sharpies. And then I have my Copic Multiliners 0.3 and 0.5. I've also grabbed my, it's just a mechanical pencil, Faber-Castell 0.5. I usually work in three. It's my favorite, but it's downstairs, so five it is. And then this is Tombow Mononok Eraser. And then I have because I can't not, I always have my black and white General's charcoal pencils and a blending stump. And the paper, I'll we'll move this to the side, and the paper we're going to work on today is 110 pound Digital Spring Hill cardstock. 110 pound. Now, this is an 8.5 by 11. I, for some reason, cannot find 8.5 by 11s unless I want to buy like, you know, 75 reams of them or one ream for a bazillion dollars. But I did find an 11 by 17, I think this is, and I've cut it down, so... 
110 pound cardstock. This works really well with Copic markers. I use this for Copic markers, my colored pencils, pencil work, graphite work. I work on this uh, very much so. Um, it's a really, really cool um, substrate. I like it a lot. And okay, I'm gonna straight up a little bit and then I will come back. Thank you so much for being here. Let's get started.
Let's take your time.